Hey y'all, let's take a look at equivalent equations, which are pretty straightforward. An equivalent equation means every solution of one is a solution of the other. Don't worry about writing that down or memorizing the definition of that or anything like that. We're just going to work with practical examples of this and we're going to, we're going to solve equations now. We're going to be working on solving actual equations in algebra. And uh, let's look at A and B. And uh, basically, let's just look at A first. What number does X need to be to make that a true equation? And the answer is, of course, 6, right? If X is 6, this gives us a true equation, correct? Look at B. What answer will work for X to give us a true equation? X will equal, again, 6, right? Because 6 plus 9 is equal to 15. Well, that solves the equation for us, okay? Uh, 5, you will not be surprised to learn, is equal to 5, okay? So 7 plus 5 is equal to 7 plus 5. In other words, if we had an equation with a 5 on one side and a 5 on the other side, if I added 7 to one side of the equation, I could make it a true equation by doing the exactly the same thing to the other side of an equation. All right? You're going to find that as an algebraic law. Okay? This is what they call the additive property of equality. Don't worry about the name too much. Just worry about this. Okay? If A, B, and C are real numbers, and A is equal to B. Now stop for a second. A, B, and C are real numbers. In other words, they're on the number line somewhere. We don't. We just mess with real numbers this year, the entire year. If A is the same thing as B, then, okay, in other words, A is the same thing as B. That's an equation, right? A equals B. There it is right there. A equals B. If we add a C to the A, we can also add a C to the right side, right? That makes sense. If two things are the same, if you add 10 to one side, and if you add 10 to the other side, they'll still be the same, right? It's like a seesaw, that if you add 10 to one side, it kind of hangs down, but if you go ahead and put 10 more pounds on the other side, they even out, and that's exactly what we have. And you could, doesn't matter what order you put these in, of course. You can add two numbers in a different order, doesn't matter. Five plus seven is the same thing as seven plus five. 12 plus nine is the same thing as nine plus 12, all right? So let's go ahead and copy, uh, pause and copy this one. All right, so we are going to solve this equation. By solving the equation, we mean we are going to get that x by itself on one side and everything else goes away, all right? So what we're gonna have to do to get, in other words, right now there is an x there and there's a negative seven. And you might even say, oh, there's an x minus seven. Eh, fine, whatever, call it what you want, okay? Um, we don't want a negative seven, we want zero next to the x. We don't want anything else there at all except for the x. So we have to ask ourselves, how do we undo or how do we get rid of the negative 7? In other words, to make it 0, what do we need to do to it? And the answer is, we need to add 7. So we need a new equation that says this. x minus 7, I'm just copying that down, but I'm going to add 7, okay? So these two things together are going to give me 0, which is what I want. I just want to solve for x. I don't want to solve, I don't want this jazz. What's my x by itself? I'm solving for x, okay? Well, but the rule is, if you do something to one side of an equation, we just added seven. That means we're going to have to do the exact same thing to the other side of the equation, which means we're gonna to have to add seven to that side as well, okay? Well, a negative seven plus seven, those cancel out. They give us nothing, which is what we want. That's what we're trying for, all right? Because we have the 11 plus seven now, the answer is 18, and now we have solved the equation. In other words, there's something hanging around by the x. We want to get rid of it by adding something to it, maybe subtracting something to it. But if we do something to one side of an equation, we do exactly the same thing to the other side. And eventually we'll, we'll get into all kinds of things, doing the square root and squaring it and, and cubing it and all kinds of stuff. Right now, pretty simple and straightforward. Okay, pause and copy. Okay, same thing here, right? We have an x plus a one-third equals five-sevenths. Well, we don't want that there. I don't want anything there. So to get rid of a positive one-third, you're going to have to subtract one-third. So in other words, this is our new side of the equation on the left. x plus one-third, which is what it was, we're going to subtract one-third. That's going to equal something, okay? Well, since we did this to the right side, of, I mean, excuse me, to the left side of the equation, 
and this right side has a 5 7 already, we're going to have to do the exact same thing we did to the left. We do that to the right. In other words, we're bouncing out here. Okay. Well, you know what happens when these two get added together, right? Gone. Nothing's there. So we just have an x, which is what we want. That's what we're trying for. Okay. Now we need to find out what the common denominator is. You know how to do this. So the common denominator is 21, and 5 7 will give us, what, 15? And then 1 3rd will give us 7. So 15 minus 7 is 8 over 21, and that is your answer. We have solved the equation by using the additive property of a polity. We do something to one side to clean it up and get just an x, and we do exactly the same thing to the other side to make it even. All right? Pause and copy this as well. Okay, well, I mean, this is no big whoop, same kind of thing. Once something works in algebra, you just keep doing it. It doesn't matter if things look different, you just use the same idea. All right, I'm going to keep my A the way it is, and I'm going to go, I'm going to change this to a, an improper fraction. So 4 times 3 is 12, plus 1 is 13. Okay, I do not want a 13 fourths hanging by my A. I want to get rid of it, so I'm subtracting 13 fourths. All right, so over here on the right side, we have 3 eighths. Well, since I subtracted 13 fourths from the left side, that means I subtract 13 fourths from the right side. All right, so I'm going to subtract it. Except I'm not going to write fourths, I'm going to go ahead and put eighths, because this is already an eight. So four times two is eight, so 13 times two is 26. All right, well, we are done now, right? This is gone. This goes away. We have an eight, an A, excuse me. And then we have 3 eighths minus 26 eighths. Well, that's an easy one. You just put 8 on the bottom, of course, the same denominator. Now we just figure out what is 3 minus 26. Well, the answer is negative 23. And there we go. That's all there is to it. A is negative 23 eighths, or almost negative 3. Okay? All right, let's try A and B practice set, uh, and we'll come back together and just go ahead and do A and B, and then come back. All right, well, for A, we do not want that 5 there. We want to get rid of it by subtracting it. We have a 17 on the right. Well, since we did this to the left, we do that to the right. This is gone now, when we just have an x. And x is going to equal 17 minus 5, which is equal to 12. By the way, if you're ever not sure if you did this right, you can always put this answer back into the original problem and see if you get a good equation. In other words, we could go, we say x is 12. OK, fine, let's test it. 12 plus 5, does it equal 17? Yep, it sure does, which means we got it right. Okay, B, we have a negative 27. What do we do to get rid of the negative 27? We add 27, right? Okay, so this is our new equation, k minus 27, that's the old one. We're going to add 27. On the right side, we have negative 38, and of course we add 27, just like we did right here. Okay, k is now by itself, we're gone, which is what we want. Negative 38 plus 27, don't forget we have two numbers that are opposites, signs. So we take the absolute values, 38 minus 27 is 11. This is a greater absolute value right here, it's negative, so, so the answer will be negative. And again, don't, you know, you can try this yourself. If we say k is negative 11, well, let's just replace it and check. Negative 11 minus 27, does that equal negative 38? Yes, it does. Okay. All right, pause it and try C and D. Okay, let's take a look. I'm going to do this slightly differently this time. I'm just going to go ahead and put on the left side plus one, I mean, yeah, plus one half. Because we're going to use plus one half to clean up negative one half. All right? But don't forget, it's an equation. So whatever you do to the left side, you do the right side as well. Okay? And I'm just going to add this straight on down like this. So negative one half plus one half is zero. We want that out of there. That's the whole point. X. Okay, now we have three eighths plus one half. Well, let's just go ahead and write 1 half as 4 eighths. So 3 eighths plus 4 eighths is 7 eighths. And that is our answer. There we go. Okay, D, we're going to have to subtract 4 and 1 seventh. I don't like the way that looks. I'm going to rewrite this. D plus, let's see, 4 and 1 seventh, that's 29 sevenths. Equals 3 and 1 sixth, that is going to be 19 sixths. Okay. I do not want the 29 seven hanging there and there. I'm going to subtract 29 over 7. And over here, I'm going to subtract 29 over 7. All right? There we go. And that is gone. I have a D. 
and it is equal to 19 over 6 minus 29 over 7. Okay, well, obviously we need a common denominator, right? That's going to be 42. Something over 42 minus something over 42. All right, so 6 times 7, good gravy, that's humongous. So 19 times 7 is 133. All right, 7 times 6 is 42, so 29 times 6 is 174. Okay, that's, that's a huge honking number there. Okay, we have a 133 and we have a negative 174, and we want to add those together, so we take the absolute values and subtract. So 174 minus 133 is 142, one, excuse me, over 42, and this will be negative because this 174, negative 174 is farther away from zero, so there is your answer, okay? There we go. Y'all try the ones out today and uh, do the best you can. Look at these solutions manual if you have any questions on how they did it, and uh, have a great day. Have a fun time doing this.